today's video, we're gonna clear up some misconceptions around editing and identify some mistakes that you're likely making. The first mistake of editing, and I've seen so many videos, including my own teachers for editing in film school told me this, and that's cut on action. Why? No. Cut for story. Why are you cutting on action? Why is this a priority? And why is this always the first thing being taught? There is whole montages on YouTube about the lack of continuity in Hollywood films. And that's because the editors are prioritizing story. If you're prioritizing cutting on action, you're missing the mood, the tone, the emotion, the story. You're missing everything that's important to making a good film. And you're prioritizing just someone bringing a cup to their mouth and cutting the right angle. This should be way down the list of your priorities when editing. The next tip is aimless B-roll. Sometimes you just wanna fill a stretch while someone's talking and you just throw a bunch of shots. But if your B-roll doesn't connect to what the person's saying, it's aimless and it's confusing. And your audience, their mind is racing, asking how does this shot connect to what is being said? So don't put random B-roll down. Think, does this connect to the story? Does this help move the plot along? Does this show what this product or idea is all about? Get away from aimless B-roll or go tell your DP and director to go shoot some more or make the film shorter. If you don't have the content, don't add it. My next tip is your intro is too long. I used to do this on my film. I have a nine minute film for a client and I would have a 90 second opener, which is all this B-roll and music and just aimless shots. This film I did for Boston Pizza Foundation, it was like two minute beginning on like a seven minute film. Cut your intro down quicker, get to the desire of the character, get to the question your film is asking as soon as possible. Make sure the first words spoken in your film directly correlate to the purpose to the desire, to the goal of where your film is going because they're gonna set up the success for the rest of the film. When you're underneath these storms, you see it taking on these unfathomable shapes. It truly feels like you've looked under the bed and now you've seen the boogeyman that you never thought was there. To be up close and document that, for me, there's nothing greater. My next tip is you're not duplicating your sequences. And why this is important is every time you duplicate your sequence, you're not only saving your progress, but it's giving you more energy to try crazier things. If you only ever keep one timeline and work on that, not only if you go tear apart things, you have nowhere to get back, you have to go find the right save file and all of that, but I find when I duplicate a sequence, it gives me courage to try different approaches and sometimes helps me solve a problem in the edit. So if you're not duplicating sequences, get into this habit. Every time you open up the software in the morning, every time after lunch, even a few times throughout the day, just duplicate your sequence so you can continue to edit. And then you have almost like a save file inside your project of your progress. My next tip is you're not adding fades to all your audio tracks. This is important because I don't know the science behind it, but when you have a waveform moving up, I believe at the end of a clip, you'll hear a pop and that's that little tick. But if you add just a one frame fade, the tiniest fade that you can add in your software to the end of every audio clip in your timeline, you'll avoid having any pops at the end of what is being said. When you hear that, it sounds like a mistake. It can also be really loud if people are using earbuds or headphones and then kind of disrupt their viewing experience. So before you hit export, go on to every little clip and add a tiny, tiny little fade. It's time consuming, but it will make your film sound so much better. I'm gonna to get to a few more tips, but if you're liking these tips, I've created a PDF that gives you a list of all these editing mistakes. And I designed it actually on Envato, our sponsor of today's video. And it's so easy to create presentations just like this inside Envato. They have over 43,000 templates alone for Keynote, which is where I design all my presentations. And I just did a video recently about pitching ideas and how do I create director's treatments using Envato. But this is why I love Envato, is they have so much content in there. Even the pictures of people editing, I got it off Envato. They have over 10 million licensable assets. It's super easy to use, it's very affordable, and it saves you so much time. Envato is an incredible tool for you as an editor because you can add all the templates you need for After Effects and all that. It's pretty much a one-stop shop for everything that you would need to help get that edit past the finish line, whether it's another aerial or getting some new photos or even finding some music or sound effects. Get unlimited downloads. I put a link below 
below in the description. You can check out Novato right now. They also have a seven day free trial if you wanna mess around and explore what they have to offer. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, we're gonna be doing a longer version, a six hour editor's intensive workshop where you can get a full workbook and be on a live Zoom call with us and our team working through an edit, learning on how to always be able to deliver the best video project or film. That's gonna be sold on Black Friday, so make sure you take a look in the link below under description. Back to the video. And actually, I have an editor who's a slave right now, chained to his desk, cutting this video. Lewis, <laughs> I'm laughing because he's watching this. Do you have any advice, Lewis? I actually don't even know what point he's gonna say. Yeah, I got a few things I can say. I think my point of advice here is to get comfortable with becoming invisible. Editors nowadays are really battling for attention. We're using things like flashy transitions, over editing scenes, and I think that that fundamentally is a flawed idea. When I think back to the films that have had a real effect on me, it's usually films where I lose myself entirely while watching it, and I, I forget that there's hundreds of people that have worked on this construction and brought it to life. I think a lot of times that's because the editors made a choice to prioritize things like narrative narrative, story, emotion, tone, over their knee-jerk reaction to be seen by the audience. And I think that's a really interesting challenge as an editor, to think sometimes where you can be most effective by not cutting or cutting as subtly as possible. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of incredibly talented editors who specialize in flashy edits. And I think that's really effective in things like music videos, in commercials, even in films where flashy editing is central to the plot. But it's fun sometimes to think of yourself almost as an invisible hand that's allowing the story to flow right through you. Get comfortable with becoming invisible. Great tips, Lewis. Whatever you said, I endorse. Also, pineapple does not belong on a pizza. I also endorse this message. Also, you should just give editors 100% of the budget from any film you make. Who else really needs to make a living? I also endorse this message. Gee, thanks, Mark. Thanks. Next point is people will tell you to edit to the beat. Sure, maybe. If you have the music, this is a guiding principle that can help you. But again, if that is your rule, then you're not gonna be editing for story. You're just gonna be hunting for shots to go to the snare or the drum line. This is probably one of the least creative ways to approach your edit. Now sure, there's times where it makes the most sense and it really helps. Like this fuel commercial we did, there was times that the drums really helped indicate how we wanted to move the pace along. Out, drive off. But it's great sometimes to break that up and just let the shot breathe. Let what's happening on camera unfold. If you're just editing to the beat, I worry that your film edit is gonna get repetitive really quickly. And it, again, it's one of the least creative ways to approach an edit. You're a storyteller. You're not hunting for cutting on action. You're not hunting for beats. Now this tip, I should have put it earlier on because it's probably yeah, you know, I would say it's the most important tip and that's build more scenes. I'm sorry if you're on this channel, you've heard me talk about this a lot, but don't just add random shots that you think look good. Look to build scenes as much as possible. And a scene has an establishing shot to show us where we are. It has someone providing an action. They're doing something. They're trying to accomplish something. And then it has a final shot. It has an ending, beginning, middle, and end. You're looking for a way to get out of that scene. Let us live in some moments. You don't always have to be cutting. Build out a scene. Let us feel like we are actually somewhere while something unfolded rather than shot here, shot here, shot here, shot here, shot here, shot here, shot here. That's fun, but that starts to feel like a demo reel or a music video. As an editor, you're storytelling and storytelling requires us to be present in a location for an extended period of time. So I hope these helped get editing. Remember you're a storyteller, not just a splicer and dicer trying to find things that have continuity. And if you're liking these tips, we're gonna be doing an editor's workshop. We're gonna be selling it on Black Friday. This is gonna have a handbook for you on how to edit all of our best tips. And then as well, we'll have an interactive workshop that you'll get to see and help improve your editing. So keep locked on this channel for more information on that.